If you like this video, why not subscribe? Nah. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Weekly Recap Q&A. That's the show where I sit in my car and talk about uh, last week's links, comments, and emails. Kind of bring you up to date on what's going on with the whole Frugal Filmmaker Network thing. Uh, and yes, I'm sitting in my car because the acoustics are good and it even sounds nice on my on-camera mic. So if you ever need to use a portable sound studio, use your car. It's a good idea. Uh, last week we had a question and it was, uh, would you join a Frugal Crew? And I was just curious... Uh, how many people would be interested in, this is way in the future if at all, is uh, to gather together maybe from different parts of the country to do work on a movie. Uh, I had a lot of great responses. Everyone seems really excited about that prospect. Uh, I don't know how practical it is, uh, but it's kind of fun to talk about and maybe think about. I think uh, in retrospect, appreciate all the comments by the way, lots of feedback. Uh, I always like questions that get a lot of comments, people talking, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, that's the whole point, kind of, of this show, uh, as well as to bring people up to date. Oh, by the way, and the links from last week are all in the description if that's all you're interested in, because you're not going to see a lot visually here, maybe an occasional annotation talking about the video that I'm referring to, but uh, the links are below. Got a little, a few more this week. Last couple of weeks were kind of dry, but this week we've got some good ones. Um, and the uh, question this be <laughs> the question this week is uh, about fundraising. I'm kind of curious. I mean, we all have to pay for our movies, even our micro budget movies, somehow. If we want, ever want to buy any props or make stuff or what have you, we're going to have to spend some money. So the question this week is, how do you go about raising money for that? Is all of it out of pocket? Do you do something special to raise money for your movies? Do you just set a certain amount aside. Uh, most of all my stuff uh, is pretty much coming from the show and the income generated from the uh, from this show and from any, all the videos that I post as well as I'm also an Amazon affiliate and t-shirts now are available uh, we talked about having frugal filmmaker t-shirts if you haven't heard about it if you haven't been on the Facebook group or if you haven't visited the blog lately uh, there's a link below in the description for uh, t-shirts right now they're we're having a pre-order which means that for the first run of shirts we have to get a certain number of shirts, namely about 30. That should be pretty easy. Uh, but if you go through the link um, and pre-order a shirt, it'll cost uh, $12. And then there's a code you can use. It'll take $3 off. And then with shipping and everything, it comes to a little over $13 for a t-shirt. So not too bad. We had a, a logo designed by Taylor Mosby from the Facebook group. And for those other people that designed logos who I, who've I'm, I've contacted, other stuff will be coming out, more t-shirts, uh, bumper stickers, hats should be all coming. Um, not just with this logo on the t-shirt, but other others that others that other logos that others have designed. So that's really great. Um, if you want to support the whole Frugal Filmmaker thing, this is the way you can do it. As well as watching, of course, the videos. But t-shirts are available, so check that out. They're pretty cool. I think they're a good quality shirt. I haven't received one yet, but I've received some samples and it looks uh, very positive, very good. I'm excited about that, so check it out. Um, so yeah, this week's question, how do you raise money for your movies? Um, and let's move right on to some comments and emails that we've had the past week. Uh, the first one was on the Tripod Dolly. That was the last Frugal Filmmaker show I did. Um, IV's Checks made a comment on that video, the Tripod Dolly video. And he or she asks, do you think that rollerblade wheels would work? Would they roll smoothly enough? You know, rollerblade wheels are should be perfectly fine, um, if you recall. And also, if you watched that video, I made reference to my previous videos, the trolley dolly and also the table dolly. I did use rollerblade wheels. I used rollerblade wheels that I uh, scavenged from a thrift store um, from just buying a pair of rollerblades that were really inexpensive. The reason that I didn't go with rollerblade... Well, actually, what I tried to do is I looked all over Amazon and all over the web just for the least expensive wheels and bearings that I could find, which is, of course is kind of a trap because the cheapest wheels and bearings you can find are going to be the cheapest quality. Um, and the ones that I ended up getting, which were roller skates from Walmart, uh, had some drag on them, didn't roll super fast, but it didn't really matter on a larger, a larger item like a tripod, which is heavy. However, if you're going to build a smaller rig, I think the rollerblade wheels are a great idea because they will most, well, depending on what bearings you get, of course, you know, do your homework. You know, the more, slightly, the more expensive and higher quality bearings you're going to get, the faster they're going to roll. So there's nothing absolutely wrong with that, nothing at all. And in fact, if you do use rollerblade wheels, the wheels are actually taller than the roller skate wheels that I used, which would mean 
that your track is going to be smaller in diameter and probably less expensive. I had to, I had to use two inch PVC pipe for a dolly track, which is pretty big. There's nothing wrong with that. However, you can't I can't cut it without some kind of a saw, and I don't like using saws on PVC. I like using my PVC ratcheting cutters that I use for everything, but they don't cut two inch pipe. It's just too big. So rollerblade wheels would be more expensive. It would lower the cost of your track. It's perfectly fine. Whatever works. Um, really, and if you put any kind of wheel into that side flow pipe that I use, which is kind of perfectly angled for this dolly rig type build stuff, it's fine. So whatever you can get that works, works. And then let me know. Tell me about it. Send me an email. Send me pictures. Send me whatever. All right. Uh, the next comment was on the one of my recap episodes, the one entitled Best Entry Level Camera. This is from uh, Medium Effort Pictures. Commented and said, what camera do you use to film this video, namely the recap videos? What is a good camera for a beginner that does 1080p HD for $350 or under? We are looking to get some new cameras for our channel. If I had $350 to spend on a camera, I would probably go with one of the Canon Vixia models. They have some really good cameras for a low price. The cameras come with mic inputs and headphone jacks. You can control manual audio. They don't have a lot of pro features, of course, but they're a video camera, not a DSLR which means they're really good for run and gun type stuff. Uh, if you're going to do any video blogging beyond camera, video cameras I think are better for that. Um, and $350, you should be able to get a great uh, can. I think the Canon uh, HR100 is about a little over $300. But an even better idea that people keep telling me about is if you go to Canon's website, and I'll try and put a link in the description, um, you can get uh, tap into their refurbished models, and typically you know they're refurbished by the manufacturer, and I've only heard good things about Canon. Canon's refurbished models are basically new. Somebody just bought one and then immediately returned it or whatever. Um, so check those out. Again, the Canon Vixia line is really good. I use the older HFS100, but it is a Vixia camera. Really nice for an entry level video camera. Uh, of course, this, this is not the Canon Vixia. This is the Sanyo Xacti uh, VPC CG10. It's a little pistol grip camera. Uh, yeah, that's the one I'm using for this, uh, which works really well. Um, for an inexpensive camera. Of course, they're unavailable now, but if I had to get a camera, and uh, you probably know this already, and I, my, uh, if I had to get a camera, and I didn't have a lot of money to spend, I think the best entry-level camera is the uh, Canon, it's a little point-and-shoot, I can't remember, the A1200, I believe. Uh, that's a really good entry-level camera, because you can do uh, 1080, or no, that, that's 720p, so that doesn't, that doesn't quite qualify for the uh, 1080p HD camera that uh, medium effort pictures wants. So go with the Canon Vixia. Those are good ones. Um, all right, we had a comment from TZ Chest. TZ Chest, TZY Chess, excuse me. I can talk. It's getting hot in here. It's summer. It's hot in the car. Uh, were you an engineer, architect, plumber in a previous life? Um, no, I was none of those things, actually. I don't have any kind of uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, background which seems to be would fit in most which w with what I typically do which is uh, you know build these crazy contraptions um, at a PVC mostly uh, but and even as a kid I don't remember ever being the kind of kid that would you know I'll take everything apart you know just to see how it worked although I did take a lot of things apart but I didn't really have an engineer's mindset I think maybe because I just was terrible at math so that's why I'm a filmmaker right um, so yeah, when I, you know, <laughs> I don't know how I just started designing this stuff, I just kind of wanted certain camera rigs and just found the, you know, the best way to make them for the least amount of money. And, uh, but also important to me, maybe because I, you know, I have kind of an art background or an art, just, you know, being a filmmaker is I wanted everything to look nice or be kind of aesthetically pleasing. So I try and work a little bit of that in there. So you don't usually see, you know, a lot of tape or stuff hanging off of my... Uh, my rigs, my builds. Plus, I have to explain how to build them to other people. So, just try to make it as simple as possible, uh, and just whatever is the most practical, whatever works the best. And that's kind of what I do. I'm, I don't know. Maybe I should have been an engineer. But again, I never would have made it past, past the math thing. I'm so glad when I didn't have to take any more math. Anyway, <laughs> enough about me. Uh, so that's the show this week. That's our recap. Uh, again, check the links below if you're interested in those. Some good ones this week. The question, how do you raise money for your movies? Uh, maybe we can you know, collaborate or talk about some kind of DIY formula on how we can uh, raise money so that people looking to... Even if it's just a little bit of money, how would you do that? Lemonade stand? I don't know. 
Um, anyway, don't, don't forget to uh, also in the description immediately below you can see don't, you know check out the blog, uh, follow me on Twitter if you want, uh, check the Facebook group. That's the most beneficial to you because it's a huge become a huge community and everybody's always talking. And post a question, post a video, ask for advice, and you'll get tons of responses. Uh, so it's just super active right now. So anyway, that is the recap for this week. Uh, have a great week. Good luck working on your movies, whatever you're doing, and uh, I'll see you next Monday.